Simply multiply the numbers shown to find its grid longitude to the west of the Great Pyramid. This meridian crosses right over its summit. And only about an inch from the grid longitude mandated by the code. As explained in my earlier presentations, the number 365 has no more meaning in the code than it does in referring to the calendar. There is no 365 day year and never has been. Today the year is 365.2422 days long and is growing. When this matrix was mapped out thousands of years ago, the year was 365.020081 days long and that's the number we have to use here. It results in a slightly higher value for Kukulkan's grid longitude and the very same number which fixes the grid longitude of Stonehenge. But be that as it may, either figure 52560 or 52562.8 keys the actual West Giza longitude of the Kukulkan. Here again, the monument shows us where it is on our maps. The same can be said of another pre Hispanic monument which shows an observer the number 365. This one is at El Tahin in Veracruz, the celebrated pyramid of the 365 niches, locally known as Los Niches. Its sides are decorated with small square cubby holes, 365 of them. Again, they are thought to have had a ceremonial significance, one niche for each day of the year. Can lost niches speak like Kukulkan did? Sixty steps climbing up its sixty-foot high facade, six terraces, three hundred and sixty-five niches. Multiply them. Anyone care to guess the West Giza longitude of this pyramid? Then we have this one, the so-called Pyramid of the Magicians at Uxmal in Mexico. The only round-cornered pyramid the Maya ever built. At least, it's the only one we've found to date. Can we figure out why? Yes, but not from this angle. It has to be done from above, looking down, in order that we may appreciate its base plan. A square with rounded corners. Go ahead, give it a try. I'm willing to bet a used pop bottle cap that some of you have a pretty good handle on it already. Do we not see rounded corners, which suggest a circle? Do we not also see straight sides, as in a square? Does it therefore not suggest that we square the circle? What happens when we square the common 360 degree circle? We find 129,600, which encodes the West Giza longitude of the Pyramid of the Magicians, 120 degrees 54 minutes 20 seconds. Not so difficult. So our dim-witted progenitors were quite adept with math and maps. They could accurately plot longitudes anywhere on Earth. And latitudes. And they spared no effort to leave this message for us. And they left it everywhere. So we wouldn't miss it. And for centuries now, we intelligent modern people have been looking at these monuments, scratching our heads over who built them and how. 
violating them in an endless search for gold, jewels, and bones. Even restoring them for the tourist trade. We've written reams upon reams of analysis explaining their purpose while standing on them or in them, completely unable to see them for what they are. Time capsules from great teachers. Those monuments serve to introduce us, to alert us to the presence of knowledge in remote antiquity, and they did so by showing us simple numbers and geometric constants. The use of the pi ratio wasn't once involved, but that was level one of their matrix. Now we go to the next level. Out at the Cahokia site in Illinois, the largest mound complex in all of North America, the ancient builders once raised what we loosely call a wood henge. Located some 3,000 feet to the west of Monk's Mound, wood henge consisted of huge logs some two feet in diameter, all raised and stood on end. In all, the builders placed a total of 48 of these hernia-sized logs in a circle 410 feet in diameter, or about four times wider than England's Stonehenge. While they may have preferred logs at Cahokia, over the 20-ton stone blocks used at Stonehenge, be assured you have not suffered true fatigue until you've tried to shoulder a log two feet in diameter and 20 to 30 feet long. They take five men and a dog just to roll, let alone lift. Anyway, someone, Hopewells or whomever, somehow managed to manhandle 48 of these logs into an impressive circle. Why 48? 48 posts, a 360 degree circle, yeah, they knew degrees, and pi. And we find that figure which actually shows us Woodhenge's latitude north of the equator. Now, if we do not use the pi ratio against Woodhenge's 48 posts, we wind up too far to the south, well clear of everything, barely on the fringe of Cahokia itself. But add in pi, and our parallel crosses right over the center of Woodhenge. And that's why the 48 posts were necessary in the Woodhenge, to show us where it is. Another circular monument whose position was oriented to both its form and the pi ratio is England's Silbury Mound, or Silbury Hill, the largest man-made mound in Europe. 550 feet in diameter at the base, 131 feet high, and presenting a consistent slope angle of 30 degrees. But rather than being a true cone, the builders gave it a flat top, a round flat top. I like it when they do that. It simplifies things. Let's see now. Two circles, one at the base, the other at the top. That's two 360-degree circles or 720 degrees. Consistent slope angle of 30 degrees. And pi. 
A parallel of latitude drawn at precisely 51 degrees 24 minutes and 55.43 seconds crosses right over the center of Silbury. Again, the pi ratio was required in addition to its visual message. Code buffs will recognize this figure, 67858.4, which encodes the latitude of Silbury because they've seen it before. It was also used to position the large Kefren Pyramid at Giza. The British have been looking at the Silbury a lot longer than we Americans have been looking at our mounds. Why have they not explained Silbury by now? Why did this colonial have to do it? I'd much rather go fishing. They seem content only to measure it, or dig holes in it in a search for whatever. Well, listen up, blokes. Dig all you want, because you won't find anything in it. Silbury falls under the category of a significant mound. What does that mean? As we already know, Silbury is the largest mound anywhere in Europe. Significant. Let me show you what that means to the global matrix system. <laughs> 